tonight we are going to use all this beautiful stuff to make some stuffed peppers Greek style. So here we have our orzo going. I just have this in some boiling water with uh, salt. My old French master chef would say that it should taste like the sea. So yeah, we're going to cook that up, get it nice and we're actually only going to do it about two thirds of the way. We're going to let it cook the rest of the way in the pepper. We also chopped or picked all of our basil, all the stems off. Uh, we use all the leaves. What you don't want to use is this uh, flowery stuff at the top. It's bitter and gross, so don't use that. So now that this orzo is done, you do want to hit it with a little bit of oil, otherwise it will stick. Just a tiny bit. You don't want to use extra virgin or anything like that. It's a waste of money. I'm just using regular olive oil, cheap stuff. You can use canola oil, it doesn't matter. Also, while we're on the subject of substitutions, if you don't want to use orzo, you don't have to. You can use rice, you can use uh, quinoa if you want, you could use uh, couscous, really just about any kind of starch. Okay, so now this is all pretty good coated with oil. We're going to keep stirring it every couple of minutes or so because there's stuff on the bottom we don't want to overcook. You need to release the steam out of it. Okay, so I'm going to show you guys how I clean out these peppers for stuffed peppers. My lovely assistant is going to hold the camera for me. So what I try to do is not break the pepper, of course. You give them a good rinse so you get whatever pesticides might be left on there. And I chop the top off. And then if you can get that camera so it's down so you can see. I'll just take a knife and very carefully cut through these ribs so you can pull this out the core try not to drop a bunch of seeds in there like I just did and then get in there with your fingers and pull out all these ribs you can take a knife and get in there very carefully try and get all these ribs out And then you just you just want to get as much of that white stuff out of there as you can without destroying the pepper or taking out too much flesh. And then of course you want to get all those seeds out of there. Next thing I'm going to do is cook the lamb. I'm not going to cook it 100% of the way, probably maybe 75% of the way and try and let it cook the rest of the way in the pepper just like the orzo. So I've got a warm pan here it's on about five or six it's got a little bit of that same olive oil that you just saw me use in the orzo do a little bit of garlic Hold maybe a little bit more garlic try not to let it burn and then half of I diced up red onion, I'm making a mess, sorry. You just don't want that garlic to burn. I lift the pan up off of the stove because it helps cool it down a little bit. The pan was a little bit too hot and you can see some of the brown in there. A little bit of brown is okay as long as it's not black. I'm going to go ahead and toss the lamb in there. I'm not going to go crazy on the seasoning with this lamb because the lamb is just going to go into the stuffing for the peppers and we're going to season that. So now we have in this bowl the beginnings of our stuffing. I put the cooked ground lamb in there. I let it cool off just a little bit. The cooked orzo is in there. I took one of those tomatoes and diced it up and threw that in there. I put the entire container of goat cheese in there. And I put about, I don't know, about a half to three quarters of a cup of those sliced olives in there. The next thing we're going to do is the herbs. So I've just got some basil here. I'm just going to give it kind of a rough chop. Don't want it to be too stringy, but you don't want giant pieces of basil either. I'm going to do a little bit more than that. 
I myself, I love fresh herbs. I think it's the best thing to happen to cooking. I'm going to chop all this up. Toss all that in there. This oregano. I'm obviously not going to use this entire thing. In fact, probably about 75% of this is going to turn brown and go to waste, which is unfortunate, but it's the way it goes with fresh herbs most of the time. Easiest way to pick this, grab it with two fingers and just lightly pull down. All the leaves come off. So I'm probably going to use about two or three, maybe four of these. And we're going to give it a rough chop, just like we did with that basil. We're going to make sure that there's no stems in there. I don't care if we throw this top of it away, because like I said, most of it's going to go to waste anyway. Might as well make it easy on myself. Okay, so I want to show you something kind of interesting with this spinach. I decided to wilt it before we uh, put it into the stuffing mixture. Um, so I have a hot pan here. And here, I'll prove that it's hot. It's hot. Way too hot, in fact. <laughs> but the point is, is that the spinach actually won't do anything if you put it in there dry. There's just a little bit of moisture on this spinach, is what you're hearing and what you're seeing. But if it's totally dry, it won't do anything until you put a little bit of moisture in there. I'm going to put some of the juice from that lemon I had. And this thing is way too hot, like I said. If the pan wasn't so hot, this would all be wilted already. Spinach has a lot of water in it too. So once we're done with this, we're going to want to squeeze it and get all that water out of it. That's good enough. Now the best thing to do to get this water out is to wrap it up in a towel or something that you don't care about, that's not completely saturated in laundry detergent. Wrap it up, twist it, and squeeze the bejesus out of it until all the water comes out. We don't have a towel that we don't care about or anything. So what we're going to do is put it in this guy. And once it cools down, we're just going to try and squeeze the bejesus out of it and get as much water out of it as we can. And we're going to chop it up and toss it in the bowl with everything else. So here we have almost everything in here. Here's some of the spinach. I ended up squeezing it with my hand to get as much water out of it as I can and then I gave it a little chop and then I squeezed it again. So we're just going to mix all this up. One thing that I just thought about a minute ago too is what would be really good in here is maybe some sun-dried tomatoes. I don't have any sun-dried tomatoes so we're just going to stick with these fresh tomatoes. But I think sun-dried tomatoes would be really good in here. So we're just going to mix it all up. Once we get it all mixed up, we're going to give it a taste, and at this point is when we're going to season. We're going to add some salt, some fresh cracked black pepper, possibly some garlic, and that's probably about it. And then once we get it all mixed up real well, we'll fill up these peppers and toss them in the oven. Here we are stuffing the peppers. I took just a little bit of olive oil and salt and rub down the inside and outside of all these peppers. So we're going to fill them as tight as we can without breaking them. 
We got the oven at 350. We're letting that preheat. And I'm not sure how long these are going to take. You want them to be hot all the way through. Um, so if you have like a meat thermometer or something that you can use, you want them to be at least, I'd say, 150 down in the center of the stuffing. So we're going to get these filled up. So here are the peppers. Just out of the oven. A couple of them fell over. That's okay. I left them in there for 45 minutes. Actually, closer to 50 minutes. 45 probably would have been enough though. Looks like the peppers are cooked. I think they're probably warm on the inside. Unfortunately, I do not have a thermometer, but I think they'll be just fine. 